Hi guys, my name is Colin and this is Colin Talks Crypto. Happy 2023. This is the first video I've made this year. We've seen some crazy stuff happening in the Bitcoin space recently and I want to update you on my strategy and what I'm looking at and thinking with. Thanks for joining me. Bitcoin was around 15,000 at the low and we recently just saw a massive week-long run-up to $21,000. And I want to just touch upon my macro thesis. As you guys are probably aware, as I've covered a couple times now, I do still, to this moment, believe strongly we're going to see a stock market crash. But I think it's not going to be in the imminent future. I think that we're talking a couple of years away. So I think that we will see a Fed pivot, meaning a drop in the Fed interest rates after 2023. So sometime in the beginning probably of 2024, we're going to start seeing the Fed dropping its interest rates. Now every time historically that has happened, we have seen a crash in the stock market. It's happened over and over again. It happened a couple of years ago with COVID. It happened in 2008. It happened in 2000. It happened back in the 1970s. It has happened over and over again. And it's counterintuitive because you would think that the Fed dropping the interest rates would be bullish, but I think what happens here is the Fed has basically overcorrected and basically caused so much damage and they wait till they see the signs of having caused so much damage that by the time that they're actually willing to decrease the interest rates, it's actually too late. And then the stock market continues to crash until it reaches its bottom and then finally reverts. And I think that that will be our next bull run, our next major, major all-time high breaker for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I do think we'll see a small bull run for the next halving event around 2025, but I am actually not for sure if we'll break the previous all-time high just because of the macro being so bad. And we'll be right in the middle of that stock market decrease heading toward a crash because it'll be right after the Fed has dropped its interest rates. So that's what I'm looking at for the long term. Now, I guess I never really talk about the medium term. So you guys think that I'm only doom and gloom and that's not the case. And so I want to drop this particular video to clarify that because we have a lot of years between now and 2026. So if my whole stance is that we're going to see a stock market crash in 2026, 2027, 2025, somewhere in there, then what are we doing until that point? So there's a difference between time frames when trading. You have long time frames, medium time frames, and short time frames. So like right now over the short time frame, we had a bullish move up to 21,000 and then perhaps back up to even new local highs, maybe up to $40,000 in the coming weeks and months. That's what I have my eyes set on currently. So basically what I see between now and 2026 or so when the stock market I anticipate to crash is one or more Bitcoin relief rallies, mini rallies, mini bull runs. You know, Bitcoin does not go sideways for long. Bitcoin is not a flat asset. It is highly, highly volatile. So it's going to make some moves on the way over, even if it's generally sideways, but it could be sideways within a price range of 30,000 or $40,000. I mean, it could be massive. So these are big, big, big swings and I wanna be paying attention to that. I'm not a day trader, but these bigger, bigger swings I do want to take advantage of because they become more obvious the bigger time span you look at. If you try to trade within a day, it's very, very difficult. If you try to trade within years, it's a little easier to see the macro signs and to get the overheated and underheated um, indicators. So charting and analysis is thinking on your feet. You have to be able to be fluid. And if the market changes due to whatever reason, you have to be able to adapt. Adaptation is key in trading and you cannot have a fixed narrative. You can have an idea of where you think it's going to go, but you have to be able to change that and adapt as necessary. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I am looking at what has changed and I think that what this massive green candle bodes is a medium term relief rally. I think we're going to see Bitcoin perhaps make a leg up to 25,000, perhaps even 30,000. I think that would be a very good place to take some more profits. And that's exactly what I'm going to be looking to do. I anticipate in the medium term, we are likely to see a further run up. It'll go to 23,000, 25,000. That's the next major resistance range. Basically 25,000 and 30,000 are the next major resistance ranges. And I want to take some profits at those ranges. It's not that I'm necessarily bullish for the next bull run. I don't think that we're making the next all-time highs 
for Bitcoin this year or next year even. And I think that a lot of people will start saying that like, oh, we're going to the moon, six figure Bitcoin. Well, I don't think just yet. And so I guess this video is my way of explaining to you guys my dual time frame thesis. On the medium term, I do think that we're going to see a run up in the price. And that run up could be in the next several months. It could be three to six months of run up and, and then coming down again. Then in the next couple years, my long term thesis, I do see a massive stock market crash. And if you don't know why I'm saying that, check a couple videos ago where I talk about the uh, US Treasury inverted yield curve being the first indicator, which precedes then a Fed run up of interest rates, which we are seeing now, and then a flattening off, which we're about to see because they've indicated they're going to stop increasing interest rates soon. And then a pivot downward for the Fed interest rates. And the Fed has already said they anticipate generally to keep the interest rates high for all of 2023 and then begin dropping them. So it's right in alignment with all the times we've seen before back in 2008, back in 2000, back in 2020. All these patterns are aligning for that macro long term thesis. And once the Fed begins to decrease the interest rates, the next six to 12 months is typically a massive, massive drop to a new local bottom for the stock market. And that's where I see the S&P 500 reaching down to 2,600, 2,000, maybe at the worst, touching the double tops of the 2000 and 2008 S&P range. But that's what I see for the long term time horizon. So that's where I think Bitcoin will take a huge, huge hit. And that will be where I want to be buying and scooping up a bunch of cheap Bitcoin. Now, cheap is relative, you see, because Bitcoin could climb to 40,000 or 50,000 by the time that massive crash occurs. We're seeing a local bottom right now, possibly. Right now, you know, 15,700, there's a chance, a decent chance actually, that that could be the local bottom for Bitcoin. And so what could happen in the next few years? Well, we could have a run up to 40,000. Then we could have, you know, if we have a stock market crash in 2026, where might the price go? Well, if the stock market goes to new lows, like by far, well, we could see a Bitcoin price go back down to $20,000 or $15,000, maybe even lower, but it's not a guarantee because you've had all that time go on and the price has actually climbed. So you're dropping from a higher point. You know, if we had that drop today, 12,000 or 10,000 looks a lot more likely, but it's not happening today. And in fact, we had a massive, massive green candle. So I'm just expressing the difference in time frames. You have to be able to look at the medium time frame and the long time frame as sort of separate cycles. And that's what I'm doing. I'm positioning myself so that I can start taking profits, but not too early. I don't want to take profits at $20,000 if Bitcoin's going to go to $30,000 or maybe $40,000. I want to take profits at the soonest, really, for me, $30,000 on up is where I want to start taking profits. And I'm doing that because in the long run, the long term scenario, I do feel bearish on the Bitcoin price. But in the very, very long term, the like macro long run beyond the stock market crash of 2026 or so, I see a massive bull run. So I guess to summarize, I would put it this way. In the medium term, which is the next three to six months, I'm bullish on Bitcoin. In the next two to three years, I'm sort of bearish from where it will go down to a new low at that point on a stock market crash. And in the long, long run beyond 2026, beyond 2027, when it starts to run up to the next bull run high, perhaps 2028, that's where I am super bullish about Bitcoin, super bullish about Ethereum even more so because of its deflationary nature. And that is what I have my eyes on the prize. I want to have as much Bitcoin and Ethereum, especially for that final run up after the stock market crashes over. I know this is a lot of years in the future to be thinking, but that's what I'm looking with. I'm looking with how can I have as much Bitcoin as possible for that future future bull run after the stock market crash occurs when the money printers start going burr and we get the stratospheric rise that we see in assets following a recession level event. And that'll be 2028 or beyond. And I think that we could see $1 million per Bitcoin and easily five figures for Ethereum and all of that stuff we've been waiting for. You know, I was hoping it would happen last year, but we didn't quite make it. And we have some macro negative events that we're, we're battling here. The Fed is irresponsible with money. And so we have to just keep that in mind. So that's how I'm looking at things, guys. As usual, I'll keep you updated if anything changes. Have a great day. Take care. Talk to you again soon.